May 3rd, 2019, Calvin Castine at the Rainbow Wedding and Banquet Facilities White Room. And we are here for an annual event. In fact, it's the 45th annual Chapter 462 Banquet, honoring deserving citizens around the North Country. And the uh, first one took place back in 1975 at the Anchorage in Rouse's Point, and it's been going strong ever since, and for the past many years, it's been here at the uh, Rainbow facility. People are just starting to gather here. The banquet itself won't get going until about 45 minutes from now, so the crowd is just, just gathering as we are looking across the way. Uh, tonight, uh, Tim Gagne will once again be the master of ceremonies. He's talking to the chapter president, Mr. David Blix. And uh, the honorees will include, and you'll hear more about these folks as the evening progresses. The Focus Forward Scholarship will go to Olivia Gagne. American History Awards from Beekmantown Central, Cody Gadway, Shazy Central, Kendra Becker, Northeastern Clinton, Mara McManus. Moores Elementary, Cameron Caden Guerin, Ross's Point and Mountry, Benjamin Bresnahan, Northern Adirondack High School, David Griffin, and the NAC Elementary, Evan Calvitis. There will be a recognition of the Altona Fire Department and Auxiliary, who did such an outstanding job uh, this past summer with the forest fire that was here. Uh, it's going to be a Lifesaver Award to Jeremy Gay from Rouse's Point. Contribution to Youth Award to Josh and Sarah Howell. Caring for Others Award from, for Altona's Ellen Montgomery. And a Community Leader Award, Citizen of the Year 2019, will go to Jack Dragoon from Moores. So, uh, well represented from uh, throughout the North Country and the Northern Tier, uh, 45th Annual Banquet. And... Uh, as we said, the crowd is just now gathering and it looks like it's going to be another outstanding evening. You know when you come to the Rainbow that you're always going to have an enjoyable time and tonight will be no exception, I'm sure. So we'll try to find some folks to talk to. If not, we'll get underway with the start of the program. But I'm, I'm hoping to find somebody who isn't too busy right now to uh, take a moment to chat with us. All right, we put Judy Castine behind the camera because I can talk to these gentlemen. Mr. Tim Gagno, and uh, you are uh, anything in the lodge? I am the auditor for auditor, the lodge. Like a trustee. For the know. chapter. But I am also, the, uh, I am also a national uh, delegate for the jurisdiction. A uh, national delegate for the jurisdiction for the jurisdiction. Northeast jurisdiction. Yes, That's right. yes. So, in uh, two years, you'll be going to the national convention for the Woodman. That's what they're telling me. <laughs> If you get reelected, if you get reelected two years from now, if I get reelected two years from maybe now, maybe I'll run against you. There you go. Yeah. Where's the? Where's the? Uh... You could be president. <laughs> <laughs> no, that job is to get a vice president. So we there you go. Yeah. Yep. But this is president of the of the of the chapter here. I keep wanting to say lodge, but a few years ago it was changed the chapter. They blixed. How are you? Fine. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to our 45th annual banquet. Hope everybody has a good time and we give out a lot of awards. Yeah, uh, 44 years ago, because it was 75 that we had the first one, so uh, this is the 45th one, and that was held at the Anchorage, and that was the place to be back in uh, 45 years ago was the Anchorage, and uh, you know we're very lucky that we've now got uh, the rainbow here to to have a great venue to have this kind of which activity is, which is now the place to be so right. yeah it's it's the place to be for any any major event yeah uh, you've been president how long dave this should be my third term one year term so it's not 12 years no no yeah. re-elected last year as president nobody dares to run against you no you got <laughs> one other competitor and now i'll show you a secretary they switch off so <laughs> we switch back and forth <laughs> There's our Lifesaver Award winner. <laughs> oh, I think, I think we need to find him a table. Just hang on a second. Okay. 
Just a little behind the scenes information. <laughs> Since we shut the camera off about 20 minutes ago, it's been nonstop hectic uh, goings on here. More and more people arriving. We're expecting a crowd of between 140 to 160. And uh, they're still arriving here. We're just a few minutes away from the, the opening uh, comments. So another uh, outstanding banquet about to take place here at the Rainbow Banquet Facility and the 45th Woodman of the World Award Ceremony. All the people who are organizing this are busy, so we found somebody who has nothing else to do to talk with us. But 44 years ago, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Langlois, at the first banquet back in June of 1975, uh, you and I had a lot to do then, didn't we? Yep, sure did. <laughs> There's no question. Yeah. Uh, I first got introduced to the Woodman in uh, January of 75, and uh, I heard about these awards, and I said, we're going to do that. And together with Dwayne and uh, Andy Spear, we, we put on a banquet, and yeah. then shortly after that, we got the, the lodge organized, and the, the rest it, is history. It's still a miracle, because the first, yeah, the first banquet that we had, we had it at the Anchorage. Yeah. There were six people there. No, no. Bernie, well, Bernie King was there, and his wife. And there were four other couples, I think. Then all hell broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might have been before I got involved because the first one we had was yep. we honored Dr. Southwick, and uh, it was just you know it was just a, a great evening that evening, and uh, yep. we uh, utilized that anchorage for so many years until they went and it was a burned good place. on us. That's and, right. You know? yep. But yep. Uh, you know, I think if. Uh, younger you, younger I, don't look so far away at the camera here, let the people see. I know he, he, he likes his profile, so that's why he does that. He thinks he's a... Uh... Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if we had a crystal ball back there, and of course Judy was there too, so there's, we're probably the only three that was <laughs> at that first one that are here yep, tonight. That's right. Uh, this is Diane here? No. Nope. not here, so nope. that would have been four if Diane yep. made it. Yep. But if we had a crystal ball and could have projected ahead to the far distant future of 2019, uh, I think we'd be very pleased with what we see oh, here tonight. Yeah, excellent. Nothing but super. Yeah, yeah, no question there at all. None. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I know I got how I got involved with Woodman. I got let go at Sheridan. I was talking to a guy named Rod Barlow, and he said, I'm going to start working for the Woodman. And I said, that sounds like a, a very interesting organization. I, so, I learned a little bit from him, found out a lot more from you. And uh, how did you first hear about the Woodman? Do you recall? I know it's been yeah. 50 years, but... Easy now. <laughs> uh, Bell's no longer here. Was it, uh, yeah, he was an McChesney? area man. Yep, Dick McChesney. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's a long story. Yeah. Very long story. But uh, that's, he's the one who got you involved. Yep. And, Yep. And of course, uh, you know, the guy out of Albany who we thought so much of, Perry Loftus, uh, you know, just... Super. Uh, I, I, it's strange that you say that because tonight before I left home, I said, I wish that Perry Loftus was still here because what he said was you could put your put anything on it. It was top notch. You knew where you were going. Yeah. But everything's changed now. Yeah. So I did want to talk with you just for a moment because you... you experience the history uh, along with us here and I just think it's it's uh, very heartwarming to know that oh, this yeah. is still going and so going so strong after after all super. these years. Yeah, super. Yeah. All right, I know we got you off guard, Dwayne. We speak to you talking to us. Catch you later. Dwayne Langlois from okay. St. Albans. Yeah. We're right about now, so Dave, can you come up?
assignments for those who may not be of the Christian faith to, in their own way and expression, offer their spirit. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of life and the gift of love. We also thank you for these men and women here who celebrate what's been of the world, for all the good that they have done and continue to do within the community. We ask you to bless them, guide them, and bless this food they're about to eat, that it may always nurture us, that we may do your Son's work. We ask this in your Son's name, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we have a great night, to, night for you tonight and a uh, great program. So uh, enjoy your dinner and we'll be back. I'm Jim Gallo. I'm going to be your master of ceremonies tonight. And first, I'd like to introduce your officers for uh, Chapter 462 of Wooden Life. Our president, David Blaze. <laughs> Vice President, Floyd Bursey. Wave your hand out there, Floyd. <laughs> Secretary, Linda Danielle Horn. <laughs> Treasurer, Angela Zambica.
Morales' Point Elementary, our winner is Benjamin Brezhnehan, who unfortunately could not be with us tonight. From Northern Adirondack High School, we have David P. Griffin. <laughs> From Northern Adirondack Elementary, we have Evan Calvagas. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our 2019 Open Water Award. You may not always have a comfortable life, and you'll not always be able to solve all the world's problems at once. But don't ever underestimate the importance you can have, because history has shown us that courage can be contagious, and hope can take on a life of its own. Those are the words of Michelle Obama. Again, congratulations to all our winners. Please continue to make a mark in history. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite Joel Wood from Congresswoman Stefanik's office. He's going to help us with the rest of the, the program. I'm very shy and I'm not used to speaking, so I apologize. <laughs> it's an honor to be able to be here to uh, talk with you this evening. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank the woodsmen for doing what they do for the community, because you really do go above and beyond. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the public sometimes don't know that. So I know I'm speaking to the choir, so to speak. But it's through you and what you do and hopefully Calvin's uh, uh, ability to get it out there on TV really helps the people to know how you really do get out there to appreciate the people in the community. So thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. As I speak tonight, I was asked to speak on behalf of uh, the Office of Emergency Services. I'm the assistant director there. 
Eric uh, sends his uh, poodles, the director. Uh, but it's my honor to be able to speak uh, with regard to Altona Fire Department. Uh, as you know, uh, it's not easy to run an operation, right? And everyone's always running away from fire or an incident, but who's always running towards it? That wasn't a trick question that you were going to talk The firefighters, right? Or in mass response or law enforcement. They always run towards it. Well, you asked something this past year that was a lot for the community of Altona, and it was the, uh, the rock. So when I first started my job back in 1997 as assistant director, uh, I'd always heard in the distance about them talking about the rock and how the blueberries were awesome. And so I said, well, that, that's, that's neat. But they said the one thing that they remember is the fire that they had there before, and they hope they never had it again. Well, I thought I'd get through my career without having to worry about the rock. Well, that's not true. Because last year, we had to worry about that. Not so much us. You know, when an incident occurs, the reality is it starts local. Now we bring a lot of resources in to assist with the response, but it starts local. And the Altona Fire Department happened to be the local fire department, but they couldn't do it alone. And that's the reality of what's happening within the fire service and as well EMS. We can't do it alone. We depend on others to assist. In the one of the uh, best things that Clinton County has had since the 1950s is called the Mutual Aid Fire System. And they've done it very well. And I see, come on firefighters, raise your hands. I see a lot of them out there. I realize how many faces I've seen. It's uh, very well. Thank you. The many hands that went up were a part of, I think, some of this response for Altona Fire Department. And so we activated that, and through Greg's guidance as the incident commander, but as well, it was on state land. So now we had to work with regard to bringing resources in from the state to assist. So we had a lot of agencies going to assist the fire department, because they can't do it alone. But it wasn't just Clinton County. It was big enough that we had to re uh, request the resources from our Canadian uh, neighbors, as well as Vermont, as well as our Franklin and Essex County neighbors, but as well we reached out even beyond that. We had to get state resources in here to assist us with regard to uh, water supply and bringing the uh, helicopters in for that. So we had uh, New York State Guard, uh, DMA come in as well. Homeland Security assisted us. Some people don't realize how valuable that resource is. We have a potential of losing that resource. So I'm going to speak to you now that I hope that you let your congresswoman know the, the importance of having that resource here to assist us because they've helped many a times in this community, be it uh, a fire, a search, or even a review of a rivers for ice jams. Uh, it's, it's important, so please take that back to our congresswoman to to continue the, the fight to keep that uh, resource here for us in the community. Absolutely, Kelly. She appreciates the working relationship that we have, and I'll be sure that I make that point clear. Thank you. And so, all those resources, it's a lot. But you know what? It also ends local. So, when all those resources go, it takes that, that fire department to pick up some of what was happening. And so, uh, it's my honor, I won't go on and on and on, you know, I, I don't like talking, you know that. <laughs> they told me I could speak it out, but I said, no, that's too long. But listen, I can't uh, uh, say enough about Greg Spinner and the Altona Fire Department and, and what they've done for this community and how they responded to that incident. So I think we need to give Greg and his crew a round of applause.
The world needs people who save lives. So to talk about our life saving award, here's Calvin Gaston. Northern Frontier a little bit, and 
And so we have over 100 uh, children playing baseball and softball that didn't have that opportunity uh, not that long ago. And they started the two of them from the ground up. But when I was asked to, to speak about the two of them uh, tonight, I thought of a story that I want to share quickly with all of you. So when I was in, um, just out of college, and uh, I always have to change this story, by the way, but I can say it for real because my wife's not here today. I had this girlfriend, and uh, <laughs> so I just always say it was a friend of mine, but now it's my wife, she's at home, so I can say it girl. So I had this girlfriend right out of college, and um, she was from Long Island, I was from Chasing. So completely different backgrounds where we came from. So she asked to come up to Shay because I talked about the North Country like this magical place, paved with gold, the streets paved with gold. So she came up to Shay and I brought her to all the famous land, uh, you know, landmarks to Shay Z. At the point, I brought her to, at that time, so a lot of these things are going to test your knowledge of Shay Z history here. So I brought her to the uh, Main Street Market. So we went to Main Street Market and we walked around there, and I knew like almost everyone in the store. So my girlfriend at the time was amazed by that, because in Long Island you don't know anyone. And if you do know, then you still put your head down walking by. So then that night, I thought I'd really do something special for her. So I brought her to the wedding dock. And uh, it's kind of surprising that it didn't work out between us, right? Uh, so I brought her to the wedding dock, and again, I knew most of the people that were there as well, too. And actually, if you go tonight, a lot of those same people are still there. <laughs> and uh, so I go to the weathercock, and she's amazed how I know all these people at the weathercock. And, and she talks about how amazing this is. So about a month or two passes. And I don't know if you remember, remember, and I know, of course, big surprise, Calvin videotaped uh, all this. Remember the 1990, I think it was 1996 flood? Was that 96? Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah, all the EMS and fire people, all the yeah, what is it? Flood, flood 96, ice storm 98. Yeah, 96, yeah. So 96, and uh, I hear, and this is also a test here of local history, um, the Mr. and Mrs. McWinney. For some of you might remember the McWinney's hardware store in Chaney way back when. But Mr. and Mrs. McWinney used to live on the end of this road. So I really didn't know them that well. But um, I heard that water was rushing through their home. Some of you might remember this. So my father and I and a friend of mine, we went down there and we filled sandbags for hours and hours and hours on poor Mr. McWayne's home. So I got home, I called my girlfriend and she said, now where were you? I said, well, we were filling sandbags and for this McWinney family. She says, I'm confused. Do you know them? I said, well, I know who they are. I don't know the McWinney family. And this is, this is, if you ever want to know the difference between North Country people people from the city was her next state. So she said, you don't really know them that well, so then why'd you do it? <laughs> and that, that actually was one of the moments where we said, I'm not going to work out with you. <laughs> but the point I was making is that, that so many of you in this room, including Josh and Sarah, do things for people that you don't know. You do it because they're North Country neighbors, and they're people that you, you maybe seen, maybe know, maybe don't. But we do things for people that we know, and for so many of you, you do them just because you want to help out. And so I thought of that story when I think of Josh and Sarah. These are two people who started this little league, not to give the award, even though they get one tonight, not to, to have their name on something, not because it was just for their children. They did it because they wanted to help others, and they wanted to do this for children of our of the North Country, and not just the children of their, of their little town, they did it for children of of Scioto and Altona and Moores and Ross's Point, on and on, because they, they cared about the people. They wanted to give back. And, and when I think of Josh, Josh is not a North Country guy. When I heard when I first heard that Sarah was getting married to a Josh Howe from Georgia, I said, wow, she married a guy from Georgia, Vermont. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh, I remember when he came to me and said he wanted to start this this little league, and I thought he was kind of crazy, but how, you know, you know look at the weather outside, <laughs> how we're supposed to play baseball in this, but he was determined to do this, and again, it wasn't for anything that he was going to gain out of it, 
He was more than happy to let someone else kind of take the credit for it or to put their name behind it. And he spent hours and hours and hours of this countless time of preparing for this, this little league. Um, and then to do it also, let's not forget, every time I used to see Josh Howell somewhere, he always had one little blonde child in his hand. He's got Aiden and Emma and Annabelle and Ivy. He's got four children and he's trying to do work a job and have these four children. I think he added dogs recently too to the tennis. Yeah. Um, and just and every time I would talk to him, he was either at the, the, the baseball field or he was working on, you know, uh, what kind of uniforms we're going to get in sponsors. But of course, Sarah as well too. One, one story I remember, uh, there was a neighbor of mine who said to me, hey, uh, Josh sent a message out that, uh, and I think like all you farmers out there are like this, sent a message out and he said he said he needs help at the baseball field, driving the infield on the tractor and doing some other things, a lot of manual labor, someone's got to get on the tractor and do that. I said, I think Sarah Menard has driven a tractor once or twice in her life. Um, but Sarah is, is just always behind Josh, always, it is every kid too. That's, that's, I think what's so great about these two is that they care about every child on every team and they just work so hard to make sure that every child has the greatest baseball and softball experience they could possibly have with no one asking, none of them, the two of them asking for a pat on the back. Um, and I wish, if tomorrow is our opening day of baseball season at uh, Gunner Field and, uh, and Altona's reservation. And I wish you could all see and come that, at, at uh, 9 o'clock. 8.30. 8 for the players will be there. 9 o'clock is the opening ceremonies. And at 9 o'clock, you would see over 100 kids in the nicest uniforms, the nicest hats, walking around the beautiful field almost completely because of Josh and Sarah Howell and the time they put in. in and I look at it in a personal way. I have had such a wonderful experience last year and this year with my son in Little League. And that's what these two people gave to me and to so many other families in, in the North Country. So I want to thank those two from the bottom of my heart for so many parents and grandparents across the North Country for what you've given to so many children. So Josh and Sarah, thank you. Speech. Tim. I'm still I'm still working on changing my Sorry. last name to Menard. So. <laughs> I was never looking for recognition. 
I just love the game and making a difference for all of these kids in our community. Through my life and career path, I have found what matters most in a child's development is not how much information that we can stuff into their heads. Rather, it is whether we are able to help them develop a different set of qualities, including self-control, persistence, and most of all, self-confidence. Wilma Rudolph said, the potential for greatness lives within each of us. Each day in my job, I see the hurt, poor self-confidence, and dependency among our adults. And if you peel back the onion far enough for these people, you will find that this comes from the skills that they learned as a child. If we want our children to be strong and confident, we must build them up and show them what success is within, within themselves and where there is effort, there will be reward. My husband and Josh had a dream, driven by the love and devotion of his father. He turned his sadness after his dad's passing into something that I am so proud to be a part of. Standing on the field tomorrow for our opening day, the rainbow jerseys reminds us of the brightness and hope in our youth. We are filled with much darkness around the world. Remind your children, remind your children and your grandchildren that there is a, there is a lot of greatness within that darkness, and it only takes a little effort to awaken it. Magic Johnson said, said it best, all kids need is a little help, a little hope, and somebody who will, will believe in them. Make a difference, be the difference. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for the Woodman Life, for recognizing us and all of those that are also here making impressions upon the community. Thank you for my parents for showing me the light and carrying that forward for our children. Thank you to my husband for sharing this dream and his passion. Who would have known that my desire to be part of something bigger was right here in our own small hometown community? Thank you.
down and have to preserve positive change for her community. I'd like to add a few other words. Ellen is more than just a community outreach worker. She is a major part of how this community works. I have seen her work many late nights making sure applications are filled out and filed on time for those in need, sorting food, being prepared to help those in need. When we experienced flooding in town, Ellen was quick to get to the town hall and set up beds for those having to leave their homes. Whether it was the flood, the ice storm, following Ellen would head out on the road, most often making Tom drive her, checking on people she thought may need some help. Anytime there is a reception at the church hall, you can count on one of Alan's crop shop full of meatballs. <laughs> Among many things she does as an auxiliary member, she bakes for bake sales, she's at the station making sandwiches for the firefighters. During last summer, Alan was one of the many auxiliary who are represented here tonight who spent many days helping serve meals to the many, many firefighters that were needed. Caring for others is Ellen's passion. It is why it is my pleasure to prevent this award to Ellen Chapter 462's first awards banquet happened in June of 1975. 
members, among others, Dr. John Southwood, with our Outstanding Citizenship Award. Over the past 44, uh, after, after, excuse me, after, over the past four and a half centuries, a decade, not centuries, we've been able to honor a great number of deserving community members. Tonight's award ceremonies is a perfect example of, as we look around at the people we've already honored here tonight. Sometimes we've honored and recognized people who have stepped up for an important event, and sometimes we honor someone that makes you feel like apologizing for taking so long. This is our 45th annual banquet, and at any time in, the, in that 44 year period, we could have honored this man that we're honoring tonight. So you have to say, Jack, we're sorry it took so long. <laughs> uh, Jack asked me to keep it brief, so I will do that. Uh, Jack Dragoon, a self-made businessman, civic leader, and public servant. He served 30 years as Forest Town Supervisor. That's three full decades. He started in the family business directly out of high school. As an 11-year-old, he began raising money for the Morris Volunteer Fire Department that was being organized in 1948. He has continued to support that department for the past 71 years. In fact, in the period of 1990 through 2018, he personally raised $33,755 for the Morris Fire Department. He served two multi-year stints as fire chief and also served in various other offices, being named Fireman of the Year on several occasions. An era when few local businesses in the northern tier survived, particularly those who rely heavily on the farming community, Ragoon's farm equipment continues to thrive providing employment for over 20 local employees, providing jobs is a very important part of any community. Jack is a longtime trustee of the Morris Methodist Church. He has served on the Morris Senior Housing Committee, has been a member of the Elks Club, served on the local Boy Scout Committee, and is a longtime supporter of the FFA. In 1991, Jack and Margaret were honored as King and Queen of the annual North Country Chamber of Commerce Winter Carnival. That was only 28 years ago. So. <laughs> Not that long ago. Uh, Jack can be found at many town and community activities offering his cooking talents, uh, donating that talent, of course. A strong example of Jack's generosity can be found in his annual open house. And well over a thousand community members show up yearly to enjoy the famous Dragoon hospitality. Also a true family man, Jack Drago, <coughs> embodies the term community leader. Is that brief enough, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> so Jack can come up here and accept this floor.
Fireman's today are very fortunate to have equipment we have today, and with mutual aid, it is outstanding. That probably got started in Hemingsford. Big fire over there, we just bought a new truck. And a very wondrous chief there, they come over and want to know if we would go to fight, help fight the fire. And when Mel Titus was in charge back then, and that's where mutual aid got started in Canada. So, just a few items to let you know. But I want to thank you all, and I'm sure there are some in this crowd deserve it more than I do. Precise and to the point, but uh, a lot of community people are able to be recognized, deservedly so. Uh, everybody's kind of busy, so we won't interrupt by uh, talking to anybody. We want to congratulate the officers of the Woodman Life, Chapter 462, and, uh, and a job well done. So, hometown cables look at the 2019 Woodman Life Awards Banquet. Thanks for watching and for those of you who support viewer-supported local television hometown cable. Again, thank you for watching. And our congratulations to all the recipients.